So some of the interesting use cases that I've seen are um, being able to take a screenshot of a chart and screen grab a section of it, have the mod and then pass the model. What is the reason for this divergence here between maybe two trend lines? And you then give the model a little bit more context and it can read from the X axis. That's a date. The Y axis is maybe a stock price and the date in which the two lines diverge, go and be able to look at news, summarize anything that was interesting happening around then, and then surface that. And the way that you can start taking information and be able to pull out relevant pieces that you can then push that into a language model that can do some interpretation and summarization. And then, and then secondly, either in order to make that language model able to do something interesting with it, I think it needs to be like two options. One is it needs to be trained on a very relevant corpus as well as very relevant uh training data that have specific inputs and outputs um, or two i think you can actually get very far with intelligent prompts that direct a language model on what it should do in certain scenarios so an example for that is i have a language model uh, I want to build it in-house for some big multi-manager and I want to then have an investment professional be able to add in this language model in on like the right hand side in a chat box next to a UI and I want to say uh, what are the biggest risks in my portfolio now the language model if you were just to have it say go try to figure that out like it doesn't know what your portfolio is it might it, it, it doesn't necessarily know how to think about risks um, but if you were to, for example, say language model, the user is asking this question, what are the biggest risks in my portfolio? We have 10 different APIs. One of them is for portfolio risk decomposition. If a user asks about risk decomposition, route their request to this API and figure out what is the date that they're asking about who their user is, which portfolio are they asking about, and then structure the arguments for calling out this API, whether it's a, a REST API or a Python API, in strings, lists, integers, dates, whatever the API interface is, and send me that output. And me is this API middle layer that will then take that output, call the API, get the results, and send it back to the language model, saying the user originally asked, what are the risks in my portfolio? We call the risk decomposition API. The results of that is they have, let's say, $100 million in, let's hope they don't have that. Let's say they have $1 million in dollar beta vol. They have $100,000 in uh, long-term mo, $100,000 in short-term momentum, and $600,000 in ideal volatility within their portfolio. Now, the model can go back and say, oh, you actually have a tremendous amount of beta volatility. Uh, if you, beta volatility is the amount of dollar volatility in your portfolio that's attributed to the market going up and down from this heavily exposure to the S&P 500, we'd recommend that you would hedge that out potentially by adding in a, depending whether you're directionally long or short, um, a, uh, a counter direction position within the S&P 500. And then the model could even go call back to the API that does risk decomposition, say, what is the ideal portfolio structure given what they currently have? Pass that in as maybe a list of positions and quantities. We want to zero out their beta volatility exposure. And then an API that's very deterministic executes that, gets the resulting portfolio, sends that back to the language model. The language model then turns that into something that you and I would be able to read. And then the user gets that back on an interface that it just says, this is your dollar vol in beta. This is relatively high. Add this name to your portfolio, scale up your existing positions by this much, and that's gonna be a much better balanced portfolio. The user's like, oh my gosh, that's magic. How did that actually happen? And we're you're able to achieve that not by training a language model how to do, in this case, risk decomposition. You're training the language model how to use the APIs that already exist that do risk decomposition and how to figure out what are the arguments that you should pass to it and how should you interpret the results and then do what you really did at a summarization. And that's where I'm starting to see using a language model 
for everything. Yes. Hedgineer.